really think these are just sugar pills? Giving medicine to children was never that easy. Since my childhood, I had always been suffering from pre-examination stress and anxiety until I switched to homeopathy and now I'm stress-free. I am an athlete. I had injury on my toe while practicing. Then I took homeopathic medicine. Now I am okay. I am a retired person. I am taking homeopathic medicine on a regular basis. And that keeps me healthy and hearty. My daughter had a chronic pain in the stomach. Homeopathy helped. It's really effective. What did the great Irish poet W.B. Yeats and miraculous Indian social worker Mother Teresa have in common? Or what about Oprah Winfrey and Prince Charles? They also have something in common. They have all used homeopathy to help treat ill health. Mother Teresa had opened a free homeopathic dispensary in Calcutta. The great Indian literary figure and Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore believed homeopathy is not merely a collection of a few medicines but a real science with a rational philosophy at its base. Dizzy Gillespie, the great jazz musician has said there have been two great revelations in my life. The first was Bepop, the second was homeopathy. A list of homeopathy users is almost like a who's who of world and Indian celebrities, including sports people, actors, politicians and entertainers. Homeopathy is the second most used system of medicine in the world, currently used in over 70 countries. It has gained legal recognition as an alternative system of medicine in 42 countries. It's recognized in Germany, India, Mexico, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, and the United Kingdom. Worldwide, even allopathic doctors use or suggest homeopathy for their patients at times. As per a WHO report, many allopathic doctors and practitioners of other systems of medicine recommend the use of homeopathy for a range of diseases. In whole of Europe too, homeopathy is widely practiced. 30 million people across Europe use homeopathic medicines. But then, just what is homeopathic medicine? Why is it so popular? The popularity of homeopathy is growing with time. Central Council for Research in Homeopathy has the responsibility of building evidence for homeopathy, which is increasingly being used for chronic as well as day-to-day -day illnesses. Homeopathy was discovered by Dr. Samuel Hahnemann, a reputed allopathic doctor of Germany. Homeopathy acts by activating the body's own powers of self-protection. In other words, every one of us has our own natural healing powers. All that is needed is the correct stimulus to kickstart it. Homeopathy provides that stimulus with minimum dose of medicines. This makes homeopathy one of the safest medical systems in the world today. Homeopathy might be a medicinal system born in Germany, but its show has flourished in India. Its growth here could be attributed to two crucial factors. One, the Indian mindset towards disease and its treatment, which is close to the homeopathic principles. Mahatma Gandhi supported the homeopathy and saw it is the latest and refined method of treating the patient. Sustained efforts have been made for its growth and development. I too wholeheartedly support homeopathy. Homeopathy in India has had almost a 200 year long history. It started in the Bengal presidency towns and other presidency towns and largely through the effort of the missionaries and after mid 1850s it gained some credence amongst the gentry in Bengal particularly and Calcutta city in particular and thereafter over a period of the last 150 odd years it has grown manifold so much so that we have almost about 188 
course colleges which impart training in undergraduate courses and 36 of which also impart training in postgraduate courses. Our output of graduates and postgraduates number around 13,800 respectively and we have a large body of manpower which number almost 3 lakh who are trained homeopathic uh, doctors. So we believe that with this huge manpower at our disposal and who are dispersed all over the country, homeopathy can indeed reach out to almost every nook and corner of the country and cater to a large segment of the population. Indians have a strong belief in the concept of self-healing within body, which can fight the attacking, disease-causing factors. This fighting force is termed as the vital force in homeopathy. As WHO says, being healthy means feeling completely at ease, physically, mentally, emotionally and socially. These very aspects are also the fundamental premise of homeopathic treatment. Additionally, adequate government support made sure that most primary healthcare centers in India had a homeopathic wing so that the common man could access it. Homeopathy entered India in 1910. With time and consolidated efforts, it has evolved into a hugely effective and state-of-the-art medical science today. Despite coming a long way, homeopathy continues to be an economically viable system of treatment. In fact, a recent study reveals homeopathy costs one-fifth of the conventional treatment to the government. Homeopathy has faced some roadblocks as a system of treatment owing to some myths and misconceptions. Most arising due to lack of awareness. Myth 1. Homeopathy is mere placebo effect and faith healing. Scientific double-blind studies have indicated that homeopathy is far above the so-called faith healing effect. For instance, the effect of homeopathic medicines has been observed during clinical trials for various diseases. It has proven effective on plants, animals, children, and even in laboratory testing. Its impact has been seen not only clinically, but correlated with various scientific parameters. This would not have been possible if homeopathic remedies were placebos. Myth 2. Homeopathy is slow to act. Most people approach homeopathy for chronic problems like arthritis, allergic asthma or skin conditions, which in any system of medicine are bound to take a longer time to be treated. However, in acute ailments like fever, diarrhea, acute cold and cough, homeopathic remedies act as fast as conventional medicines, sometimes even faster. Myth 3. Homeopathic medicines are all alike, round, white and sweet. The basic ingredients of homeopathic medicines come from 3000 different sources that are mainly derived from plants, animals and minerals. Their active principles are extracted into various solvents or powders through dynamization processes. While the process for powder preparation is called trituration, that for liquid preparation is called succussion. Homeopathic medicines are prepared in an alcohol base, after which it is called dilution. 
the liquid homeopathic medicine or dilution is poured into small lactose globules. They are only a medium or vehicle for the medicine. Therefore, although they may look alike, every homeopathic remedy is different from another. Homeopathic medicines are prepared in a process of dilution. This dilution factor sometimes goes so high that it crosses the Avogadro limit, which is known in science. Where you cannot find a single molecule which might be there by a certain potency limit. Even then, homeopathic medicines are working. Why so? So people are asking questions, scientists are asking questions. How homeopathy works? What is the mechanism of action of these medicines if there is no single molecule left over there? Some hypothetical models or some experimental have been carried out at some places like IIT Mumbai. They have shown nanoparticles there in high dilutions. Dr. Luke Montagnier, who has also shown a biological activity in such high dilutions using the same principle of homeopathy, while they have shown that DNA still works even at a very high dilution factor. The dilution is done by a process in which the bottle is lifted high up. The actual process consists of a bottle of similar shape, but consisting of, of about 20 liters, and it is banged onto the table. This causes vigorous, this causes very vigorous frothing of the sample. This frothing causes bubbles to form. These bubbles rise to the surface. As these bubbles rise to the surface, they carry with them the nanoparticles and therefore we have a creaming of the nanoparticles, much like cream rises to the surface of milk. Therefore, when I do the dilution step from one to the next, this cream is carried along, these nanoparticles get carried along and these nanoparticles get carried along throughout the process up to the very end so that my final product has with it these nanoparticles. So not only have we understood what the active material is in the final product, but we've also understood the process of manufacture and explained from sound scientific principles because froth flotation is a well-established process in the industry. It's a surface science process, well used in the mining industry. And we find now that in a pharmaceutical sense, it is being very actively practiced as well. So thanks to our study, we were able to publish this in two reputed leading international peer-reviewed journals, which accepted the fact that yes, this is how it works. That is, the original medicine gets broken up into nanoparticles and some of these nanoparticles remain up to the very end of the manufacturing process. And that perhaps is what provides the activity. Myth four, homeopathy first aggravates the disease and then improves. These symptoms, if and when they arise, are generally those which got suppressed in the past due to incorrect treatment. After taking a correct homeopathic medicine, they soon subside on their own, followed by relief. Myth 5. Homeopathy has major diet restrictions. Like one can't consume coffee, onion and garlic etc. That's a myth too. These medicines have been found useful even on patients who are habituated to coffee, beetle and tobacco. The medicines always act. But yes, certain homeopathic medicines, when given, can be inactivated by certain substances. So only in those medicines these restrictions are required and not in all the medicines. Homeopathy is practiced by unqualified hands. There's no reason at all to believe this. Homeopathy studies in India include degrees like BHMS at graduation level, MDS post-graduation and even PhD. That apart, any registered homeopathic practitioner undergoes training of five and a half years as any other medical professional and studies all basic subjects under the curriculum of modern medicine. The only difference the student will have five additional subjects on homeopathy. The National Institute of Homeopathy serves as a model institute for homeopathic medical education and research in India. India, in fact, boasts of maximum number of registered homeopathic doctors, colleges and treatment units. To ensure that these colleges fulfill minimum quality requirements, the education system for homeopathy is governed by Central Council of Homeopathy. CCH is a regulatory body under the Ministry of Ayush Government of India as per a special minimum standard of education regulations 1983. 
Homeopathic colleges in India provide impeccable standards of quality education with fully loaded infrastructure. With adequate theory and practical learning exposure, students come out of the colleges as competent and confident medical professionals. Consumers have every right to ask, How safe are these medicines? Well, they can rest assured. All GMP certified homeopathic medicines are prepared in state-of-the-art manufacturing centers with stringent quality control, right from the sourcing of the raw materials to their processing, potency building and finally storage. This quality assurance is also backed by the high standards of pharmaceutical industries of India, which match the best in the world. To validate the homeopathic system of medicine as per international scientific standards, the Central Council for Research in Homeopathy, CCRH, was formed in 1978. Scientists of CCRH conduct clinical research, drug research and basic research and make constant efforts to make homeopathy stand strong in this era of evidence-based medicine. Through an interdisciplinary team of scientists from Council and other highly acclaimed research organizations, we have been able to undertake high-quality research. So far, 107 drug validation and 115 clinical research studies have been carried out in addition to preclinical and quality assurance studies. Traveling the road ahead, Council is committed to initiate researches on more challenging areas such as anemia, diabetes mellitus, hypertension, multi-drug resistant tuberculosis, hypothyroidism and cancer. Another government body of homeopathy is the Homeopathic Pharmacopoeia Laboratory, which lays down standards of homeopathic drugs and tests their purity and quality. One of the most important aspect of any medical discipline is the quality assurance of its medicines. This laboratory, Homeopathic Pharmacopoeia Laboratory, the Apex Laboratory, established by Government of India in 1975, to monitor the quality of homeopathic medicines. We are in the process of laying down standards of all the classical medicines used in homeopathy. So far, monographs of 944 drugs are being laid down in pharmacopoeias. The standards of other medicines are either being developed or being adapted from other pharmacopoeias like French, German, British or American pharmacopoeias. Other than testing medicines and setting standards, this laboratory is undertaking training programs for state government officials who are involved in quality control, manufacturers of homeopathic medicines, principals and head of the department of pharmacy of homeopathic medical college. It is also maintaining a museum of medicinal substances used in homeopathy, a herbarium, a seed bank which contains seeds of indigenous as well as exotic seeds of uh, medicinal plants and a herbal garden. Indian patients enjoy a cafeteria approach whereby they have a democratic choice to select and use the medical system of their preference. This means going for homeopathy is an informed choice available to consumers in India as a safe and pocket-friendly alternative. Cross-references of the doctors of allopathic and other medical sciences to homeopathy and vice versa has become a common practice. Many allopathic practitioners now refer to homeopathic doctors. I have been doing modern medicine for more than last 33 years. And during this period, I have seen how modern medicine has come to help the patient of all types. Homeopathic medicine has been used for more than 200 years to treat various ailments. Though this medicine has suffered a lot of criticism because still we do not know the mechanism of action of this medicine. But over the years, thousands of patients have been relieved across the world. Mahatma Gandhi was a vigorous supporter of homeopathy. He said that homeopathy is the cheapest, most modern, most profound and the least violent form of medicine and that the state should be promoting it. Homeopathy remains a cost-effective 
yet meticulously efficient modern science of healing that can easily reach far-flung corners of the nation. It's especially effective in handling modern-day lifestyle issues like urban stress and depression. For the mother and child, it has a whole range of remedies and preventive medications with great potential to improve the holistic health indices of the nation. Homeopathy is cost-effective, efficient, widely available, easy to use, good for urban stress and depression, effective for mother and child. That's all the more reason why homeopathy has gained remarkable popularity in modern India. Like forever, it is ready to take up the challenge. Like always, it hopes to emerge a winner with the people and by the people.